This video covers quadratic surfaces. It's video one of two. A quadratic surface is the graph in space of a second degree equation in x, y, and z. To graph a quadratic surface, we need to figure out what the cross sections look like, which are the sections of the surface parallel to a coordinate plane. So in other words, if we took a slice of our graph, we would not want to know what it would look like parallel to the xy plane, parallel to the xz plane, and parallel to the yz plane. In example 3, we're asked, asked to graph x squared plus y squared equals z in R3. So what we want to do is we want to figure out the three different cross sections. So when x is a constant, when y is a constant, and when z is a constant. When x is a constant, we'll be figuring out what the slices of our graph parallel to the yz plane look like. So if x is a constant, um, let's just choose an easy one. We'll say if x equals 0, then we get z equals y squared. Just plug in 0 for x into your equation. And if z equals y squared, um, that's going to be a parabola. If x is not equal to 0, then we get, since x squared is greater than or equal to 0 in our original equation, we would get z equals y squared plus a positive if x is not 0. So we know that these are parabolas in the yz. And so we would have um, right side up parabolas with y as our horizontal axis, z as our vertical axis. And the plus a positive would shift the parabolas up. Now we'll do the same thing when y is a constant. If y equals 0, we get z equals x squared. Since y squared is greater than or equal to 0, we'll have um, when y is not equal to 0, z would equal x squared plus a positive number. And so again, we have a parabola in the xz plane. And the pos plus a positive would shift it up. Now when z is a constant, first of all, we know that z has to be greater than or equal to 0 because z equals x squared plus y squared. So we know the left-hand side of the equation can never be negative, and so that means the right-hand side of the equation could never be negative. So that's why we know that z is greater than or equal to 0. So when z is a constant, we get x squared plus y squared equals a constant, and we know that this is the equation of a circle. And so parallel to the xy plane, we're going to get circles of varying um, radii. So now for the three-dimensional graph, we want to put all of this together. So we have parabolas parallel to the yz plane and xz plane. And we have circles parallel to the xy plane. So we end up with this nice cup shape, and it would go up infinitely because those parabolas will go up forever, and also the circles will just keep increasing in radius um, as z gets larger because it's x squared plus y squared equals the z, and so if z is large, the radius of the circle will be large. Now this is called an elliptical paraboloid, and we can see why, because it, it um, involves an ellipse, or in this case a circle, but a circle is a special type of ellipse. So it has that ellipse and it has parabolas, and so that's why it's called an elliptical paraboloid. Now there's a chart in the guided notes um, that has six different basic shapes that you're going to encounter with quadratic surfaces. And I would recommend looking at that chart to find the, the names of each of the types of graph, like elliptical paraboloid. 
Okay, now we want to graph um, the equation x squared minus y squared equals z in R3. Now this looks like a very similar equation to the last one, but it's actually much more complicated because of that subtraction. We do want to follow the same pattern of finding cross sections when x is constant, when y is constant, and when z is constant. So we'll start with when x is constant, we get if x equals 0, then we're going to get z equals negative y squared. So we know that's an upside down parabola. And we also know that x squared is going to be positive. So if x is not equal to 0, then x squared will be positive. And so z equals a positive minus y squared. So that would be a parabola shifted up, an upside down parabola shifted up. And so we'll get our parabola through the origin and then a parabola shifted up when x is not equal to 0. When y is constant, we want to do basically the same thing. We'd get if y equals 0, we get z equals x squared, which we know is a right side up parabola because it's um, a positive x squared. And we know that y squared is always greater than or equal to 0. And if y is not equal to 0, then it would be a positive. y squared would be a positive. And so z equals x squared minus a positive number. So that would shift the parabola down. So we have a right side up parabola. Um, when y equals 0, it's through the origin. And when y is not equal to 0, it's going to be shifted down because you're subtracting a positive number. So notice already this is going to be hard to put together. An upside down parabola when x is constant and a right side up parabola when y is constant. Now let's see what happens when z is constant. If z is 0, then we're going to get x squared equals y squared. And this would result in y equals plus or minus x. So we would actually have um, some lines going through the origin. If z equals 1, and here I'm just picking an arbitrary number for z to get an idea of what the, what the cross section would look like. So if z equals 1, I would get x squared minus y squared equals 1. And I know that this is the graph of a hyperbola. So just a little reminder, it may have been a while since you've dealt with hyperbolas. A uh, basic form for a hyperbola is x squared over a squared minus y squared over b squared equals 1. And what happens in that case is you have um, two asymptotes and then your hyperbola um, will open around the axis of whichever variable has the positive coefficient. In this case, x squared has the positive coefficient. And so our hyperbola will open right and left. It will cross the axis at a and negative a. And that's from the denominator of the x squared. So it's x squared over a squared. And um, then we know it crosses at a and negative a. And the asymptotes are going to be y equals plus or minus b over a x. So b over a times x. So we can, if we can get our hyperbola in standard form, meaning equal to 1, then we can know what our asymptotes are and what our um, intercepts are. If z equals negative 1, I'm going to get y squared minus x squared equals 1. So I know that's going to open around the y-axis. And so we get these um, two possible cross sections in the xy plane or parallel to the xy plane. When z is 1, I'm going to get hyperbolas opening around the x-axis. And when z is negative 1, I'll get hyperbolas opening 
around the y-axis. So going up and down as opposed to right and left. Now somehow I have to put all of these cross sections together into a three-dimensional graph and that's the hard part with this graph. So I'll set up my axes x, y, and z and I'll start with my upside down parabolas parallel to the y, z plane. So I have z equals negative y squared and that goes through the origin and then remember as um, when x is not equal to zero those parabolas shift up and so if you can imagine um, those vertices of the parabolas are actually higher than the origin and now I want to graph parallel to the xz plane I get the parabola z equals x squared and that goes through the origin and then um, remember as y goes more um, away from zero the parabolas get shifted down and so um, they're shifted down and then they connect to the ends of the other parabolas and then we have these hyperbolas um, around the x-axis and around the y-axis and so we end up with this shape that looks like a saddle we have the upside down parabola meeting the right side up parabola and these hyperbolas all going um, away from that. So this is called a hyperbolic paraboloid because it involves the parabolas and the hyperbola. So you can see where we're getting the names from but again refer to that chart in your notes um, for, uh, for more types of graphs. Now I just want to point out one resource you can use is Wolfram Alpha. You may not use it on a test but you can use it to check yourself as you're doing the homework and trying to picture these graphs and visualize what's going on. So when you go to Wolfram Alpha, so wolframalpha.com, you would put in the word plot and then you would put in your equation. So I put in plot z equals x caret 2 minus y caret 2 and it graphs that saddle shape for me. Now notice that um, the graph is rotated from the way that I drew it. Their x-axis is um, kind of pointing in the direction that we drew our y-axis and the y-axis is pointing in the direction that we drew our x-axis so just be aware that it might be rotated from the way that you drew it but it will give you a good idea of the basic shape of that graph now let's looking at this we can go back to what we drew and we can see um, and maybe visualize a little better how that saddle all fits together the hyperbolic paraboloid okay to, so to summarize there's one more video um, where we t uh, graph a different type of these quadratic surfaces um, but to summarize you're always going to look at the cross sections so figure out if you sliced your graph what would the slice look like parallel to the yz plane so when x is constant parallel to the xz plane when y is constant and parallel to the xy plane when z is constant and you can pick values for the x, y, and z to figure out what those slices would look like.